Hi, I'm Kim Wilson. And I'm Natasha Marchevka. And this is Speechless. Speechless. Welcome to our behind the scenes take on real life in VO, where we share our stories and our resources and our unsolicited opinions. Take it away, Natasha. <laughs> Today, we have this incredible team, Lotus <gasps> Productions. You may or may not have heard of them, but I'm telling you right now, this is one of the best interviews we've ever had. We talk about everything from um, being a non-binary person uh, in this business to AI and a whole bunch of casting stuff in between, which, of course, we always love to hear about. But this interview just blew us away. First, though, I want to share what they say about themselves on their website, because what they cover is everything we covered in the show. It blows us away. From finding the perfect voice, recording, directing, editing, mixing, and producing through getting everyone paid, they handle union and non-union paymaster solutions, vertical casting for the emerging markets, and the needs of digital campaigns is something they focus on. They offer diverse voice talent in every language for every project. Um, well, we talked about this, to, like everything today. They're, yeah. They are relationship builders. They are socially conscious. Have a listen. This is amazing. Hey, guys, every time we do a show... We cheers with something, whether it's sure. tea or whiskey. I don't know. It depends on the day. What did you guys bring to cheers with us today? Do you have something, Sam? I'm not a, really a drinker, so I didn't really have anything to toast with. So uh, grab a water. Luck to do. Oh, that's bad luck. I'm not doing that. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Hey, what does what is Jim that, have? Jim? This is a water? craft beer. Since Sam and I are in New Jersey, we're very proud of our New Jersey roots. This is from the Hackensack Brewing Company, which I personally can recommend. Oh, and this oh. this beer is called Parking Lot wait, Pilsner. Work. Oh, cool! Park, wait, I'm say it again. It's called Parking Park. Lot Parking Lot Pilsner. Oh, I love it. It's very <laughs> good. My husband is it hoppy? No, no. I, mean, I would love it. My husband loves. Uh, oh, see, I don't know beer, but my no. husband loves hoppy. I love, mm -hmm. I guess, pilsners. More Hamner, a little a little quieter. Not IPAs. So there you go. Yeah, very Do I have to open nice. it now or open it later? Oh, no. Is it open part it, of the show? Please. Open yeah, it. open well, it cheers now. Cheers when Enjoy. everyone is organized here. Kim, what did you bring? Yeah, so Kim, what did you bring? I brought something new. I brought a, a Ooh, wow. cantaloupe martini. Hello. Wow, I love it. Hello. I've never made one, so I don't even know if it's good. I will tell you right now. You ready? Oh, it looks amazing. But Turn cantaloupe. <laughs> it's not Hello? very good <laughs> it's not very good <laughs> cantaloupe alone is meh. Meh, meh, meh. meh okay orange orange cantaloupe but it, look it's pretty right it's i gorgeous. mean the aesthetic alone i mean ish just a yeah, picture gorgeous. right gorgeous. <laughs> don't do it i'm doing just a shot of bailey's because yeah we are yeah nice. yummy it's only the afternoon Right. Now, now Kim, Sam, you're, you... in, uh, you're in oh, Boston, sorry. and Natasha, what market are you in? Well, I'm in L.A. County, so I'm in New Hall, small I've town, and the big city. <laughs> That's great. Sam, what do you have? Yes. My Where'd husband's making me Sam? tea. I'm going to tell oh. him to throw some Tito's in it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <That'll do. laughs> Tito's, and, Tito's tea. and tea. I think I've done that before on the show. <laughs> Do not judge me. <laughs> no. Yeah. Don't, no judgment. <laughs> No, no, no judging. I love we it. don't want you to judge as casting people. We <laughs> don't want you to judge us that we're drinking mm -hmm. in our studio. Mm -hmm. But it, if we spill on it, it's our studio. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? There we go. Cheers. Thank you guys. Oh, Good Cheers. To be here. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. So we'll get this party started. And uh, <laughs> it started thank 10 you minutes so ago. Thank you so much please. for being here. We're so grateful to have you both. Um, we would. Is there anything you'd like to introduce about them before we just jump right into the question? <laughs> we already did that before they. Okay. Appeared. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that before off camera. So the first question we'd like to ask is tell us about your casting process and what you guys look for in a good audition. What makes good it stand audition. out? Excellent question. You want to do it first, Sam? Yeah. Okay. Um. So very basic. Like uh, the main thing is 
I think everybody needs to realize that depending on where you're getting your auditions from, they're going to be very subjectively different, how they want you to format it, how they want you to send it, how they want you to actually re record the takes or do the slate. Uh, so it's really like, I know it sounds so basic, but please read the directions. It's like that one test that they gave us in middle school, high school, where it's like, read all the directions before. And then the first person finishes and nobody does it before. They're like, how did they do that? It's because they read the directions. So, um, right. just make sure that you're like seeing exactly what they want, how they want you to label it, how they want you to send it. Obviously when it's due by, um, a bunch of other things, it's really just a matter of paying attention. Um, and then I would also say the main other thing on top of that is, um, you know, be prompt, be responsive. Yeah. Uh, if yeah, that that's like the big thing for me. And then I would probably also say, uh, I, I mean, that's kind of it, Jim. You could go ahead and say something. I want to cut in here for a second because the people that don't either spell it correctly or get the syntax correct for the title or don't follow directions, what they is don't know. In they don't know they're not getting it right because they're not getting responded to. So now we, we hear a lot of crickets as talent uh, for auditions. So you're going to hear crickets if you do it wrong and you're going to hear crickets if you do it right. So just make sure you're paying attention to the formatting, the formatting, and then of course, everything else that's required. Jim, what have you got for us? Well, uh, Sam's point is very good, but on the flip side, which is what makes voiceover really interesting. We really think, uh, procrastination plagues people. So like we, when you get the specs and you're going to audition, don't overthink it, don't over plan, don't overanalyze, just shorten the time, shorten the delay between your creativity and the execution of it. Mm. Uh, I think in that way, you sort of level up your audition. And, uh, you know, we really at Lotus Productions, we're big believers in fire away. Uh, and yeah. again, to your point, Natasha, uh, we really like talents who look for feedback. You know, uh, accepting feedback and applying it really is an art. So mm -hmm. we we kind of look for talents who uh, who look for feedback, who put it into their lives, and we really think that helps their audition sort of skyrocket. Interesting so, uh, point. Uh, this would be a moment for us to say, guys, what feedback have you got for us? Uh, <laughs> Sam and Jim run Lotus, and and with your wife too, Jim. Who I'm is? Sorry. I'm sorry. It's my sister. Oh, is it your sister? Yes. She does that. Sorry. Yeah, you can reset. And, and Jillian. And Jillian, Jillian, who does okay. a masterful job of organizing all the stuff. Yes. I didn't re realize that we could even ask for feedback. I did not know either. That work? You may not get oh. it, but you can ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is fine. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. It, 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 it just triggers something for me, Sam or Jillian, who are mainly involved in the casting and production side of Lotus Productions. It shows that you're interested in what we're up to that you're, you're serious about your career. And uh, it just hits us in a certain way, as opposed to like, you know, here it is, you know. That's Interesting. Yeah. Just well, a small tell, tell us you know, from a, It's ahead. about consistency. We're looking for people who are consistent. Consistently good. Is it, consistently <laughs> good helps. <laughs> but even if you're just consistent, you know, one of the things we say at Lotus also is like, we're not waiting for you to be good to be in front of us. We're going to be good to you right away. Mm, you know, we're, so lovely sometimes Aww. you look at like agents and managers and they're like well let us know what your credentials are let us know who you know and those things are important but at lotus productions as i said we're we're not waiting for you to be good before we're good to you we really want to respond to you and, and see is... your careers grow wow wow so kind i'm wow. so glad <laughs> yeah, you're here so we're learning so much can you tell us a little bit more about what makes a um from a performance wise what you look for when you're listening to auditions like like so you make two piles yeah. one is definitely definitely we may you know here are the things we're, here are the ones we're considering sending to the client here are the ones we won't. definitely maybes definitely maybe <laughs> and then definitely no how do you whittle it down <laughs> I think yeah. uh, well, Sam can talk to the tech side a little bit. I know from my side, when or Sam, Jillian, or I, when we send you an audition, we believe you're right for it. We believe you're doing going to do a good job. We don't really bulk out our auditions. Oh, good so to know. If you tend to almost always, if you send your audition back on time, properly labeled, et cetera, we send it forward to the client because we believed in you to send it to you. Wow. But Sam wow. can also talk to the tech side. Yeah, I mean, Fantastic. tech 
tech wise, pretty much it's just making sure that your setup is good, that you're in a soundproof room. Literally the opposite of a big open marble bathroom is your friend. <laughs> that's like, that's how I kind of tell people it's like, you know, use pillow pads to like your, your stuffy friends. So this way you could just like kind of pad the sound if you need it. Um, like obviously if you're first starting out, but you know, obviously with time kind of like upgrade your gear. Um, the main thing is always just making sure that you have a nice clean feed of audio that you can send back to us because especially now post pandemic, we, we have been working with tons of people remotely, even prior to the pandemic, but now it's, it has been the industry standard even prior to that, but it's really kind of settled in now at this point for voiceover specifically. So, um, you know, the, the room you're going to record in is probably the room you auditioned in. Please just make sure that your setups are correct there. Um, that's a big one for me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, and otherwise, yeah, that that's kind of it for tech, for tech on that side for me. From a tech standpoint, um, how many, what is the percentage of auditions that you get that have too much sound of the, too much silence in the beginning, or they're not, you know, from the first three seconds or six seconds, there's something technically wrong. Is there, do you have those submitted to you? Um, I mean, yeah, again, that could be from people who are just kind of starting out. Maybe somebody's away on vacation and they're not near their regular setup, but they wanted to audition anyway. Um, you know, understandably, I think a lot of what that comes from though is making sure you're also cleaning up your files before you send them out mm -hmm. um you know you don't want to leave uh blips and pickups and things in between you know you know goodness forbid you end up cursing and just say do like drop, drop a giant f-bomb in the middle of it and then you send that, that audition happen, as is sam does that you would be you would be shocked you, really like it, see that maybe only asking. once or twice I to us know. it's happened but it does definitely happen if you're not careful this is amazing yeah it, it can definitely happen you know luckily if, it depends on who you're working with some people will be a lot nicer and clean it out for you and not mention it and others will be like hey this kind of happened and then you can resubmit it and some are okay. like oh no <laughs> It kind of just depends on who you're working with. Again, you sure. know, studio to studio production house to production house. It's all subjective. They all have different ways of doing things. So really, it's just kind of a matter of being able to work with different um, directing and mm -hmm. acting styles and things like that. Mm -hmm. We're, I'm just curious from a, a talent standpoint. And there's there's now not hundreds. There are thousands, even tens of thousands of talent available yeah. to you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so just wondering what, how, how the submissions are looking these days, but um, hopefully our submissions, Kim and mine are completely dull in terms of throwing in the F bomb or They're any brilliant. technical. <laughs> <laughs> They're brilliant every time. Yeah. yeah. But, but you're right. There are, there is talent everywhere and, uh, and specific, uh, you know, Lotus productions. We look at lots of different social media when we look for talent, mm -hmm. we look at talent for, for talent on X. We look for talent on Instagram. Uh, Sam looks for talent on Discord and some of the emerging platforms. So uh, yeah, and TikTok as well. Yeah, we always wow. have our eye out for where people wow. are presenting themselves and, and how they present themselves. Uh, what's it's unique? What's unique about them? Oh. Uh, do you work with Alzheimer's patients? Are you a youth coach? Uh, do you sing in your church choir? These are the things. Were you a veteran? These are the things that really interest us because we're trying to cast so specifically now, mm -hmm. uh, now and going forward. Uh, we're looking for diversity in our casting. Mm -hmm. We're looking for inclusivity in our casting. So those sort of little things that are at, out there where people express who they are is really what attracts us to talents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is lived awesome. experience. Lived experience is a big one mm -hmm. for us because there are a lot of voice actors who maybe came from a different industry altogether yep. prior to this. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of people who were teachers prior to this. They mm -hmm. do fantastic on e-lessons because their entire career was about explaining mm -hmm. things to people in a way they understand. Mm -hmm. So right. your lived experience helps actually influence us in what auditions to give you. Because if you have experience in it, you already have an understanding that other people wouldn't. You're going to yes. be able to connect to the copy a lot I better. See. You can collect yeah. to the subject and the matter and everything. Yeah, so this is we, why that's I, the reason it's big for us. When I and tell people when they're doing their V123 profiles, don't just say you're a voice actor, add those things that are totally unique to you from the past careers because it matters. And I love that you're proving that it matters. Yeah, it's very true. Like when we do cast, we'll say, like, all right, here's the ver here's the variety of voices that read, but in specific in this project, these four people happen to be veterans. And if that's important to you on this client, you can, again, sell that to your client and or to your brand or whatever. So wow. uh, and it, it just yeah. varies through it. They may still pick someone who doesn't have a veteran experience, but we like to point that out to people and include it to them, to our clients. 
That's awesome. That's so good. So I'm so blown away by the um, (laughs) well, the ethics and the integrity of Lotus Mm -hmm. Productions. Really, really, really blown away. Be kind. Thank you. That alone (laughs) and scene. Okay, and we're done. No, we have a few more. Tell us about um, the current trends that you see going on right now in voiceover as compared to maybe how long even ago a year ago back? even okay. a year ago or pre-covid etc but okay okay we're just taking a quick break here to talk about speechless um we have a lot of contests going this um year by the end of the year december if you want to be in our contest go to our website speechlessvo.com and subscribe to our newsletter what will you get with the newsletter you will Come get up. The show takeaways the day of the show. So you don't have to take notes. And if you can't make the show or don't have time to watch, you you have the takeaways there. That includes also the resources and the drink re- recipes if you uh, are so inclined. And the links to the re- uh, resources. Yeah, that. Um, also, we want to <laughs> thank our show sponsors for this season. Studio Bricks, who we love. We've just sold our fourth Studio Bricks. So if you have purchased one, let us know that if we influenced you, come on. Um, so we can. We don't get paid for happy. that, by the way. No, we just want to be happy about yeah. that. And Celebrate. also Center Cam. Oh, show them what Center Cam does. Show them. So See? This do you is want not to talk to your clients cam. like that? Or do you want to talk to your clients like this yes. center cam um we're also giving away center cam in december um they are a sponsor this year and we are so delighted so back to the show tell us questions. about um the current trends that you see going on right now in voiceover as compared to maybe how long even ago a year ago back? Okay. even a year ago or pre-covid etc but okay it's currently 2023 when we're recording this. Mm-hmm. Let's just say people are watching it for a good year. So, but we love specificity. What you got for us? Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly diversity in casting has become a fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, inclusivity is a fact. Uh, authenticity a is a fact. And Sam can talk to it. Yeah. So, you know, um, we have uh, one of the major things that Lotus does is globalization of spots. So let's say we get a commercial for, I don't know, uh, Dust Devil, like the or yeah. like Dyson. There we go. Like Dyson, the the vacuum brand. They have the spot already produced in English, but now they need it in like 12 other languages. So we already know people who speak these languages. We already know different studios globally that can work with these people or if they have studios themselves. So diversity has literally been a part of our DNA since at least the 90s, if not the 80s. So that's one big, huge thing that's been really important to us too. And me as a non-binary person, I always try to make sure that I am doing what I can to include people in the LGBTQIA uh, uh, hey. community into what we're doing. Yes. And another another thing that we did uh, just specific to our auditions is I just removed pronouns from it altogether. If you're getting it from me, it's because I know you can fit the role. I don't need you to identify one way or another to do it. So um, these are things that we've just kind of done that we have been trying to hopefully push for other people to do because this is what you're supposed to be doing in, at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, this leading the way. The right. Yeah, so... Um, you know, we're, we're always just trying our best to make sure we could give everybody a fair shot. And we are always just trying to make sure that we can work with people and uplift their voices and let them stand on shoulders. So this way we could get them somewhere. It's important to us. Are you finding that more men, uh, clients still ask for more men than women, or are you finding it starting to even out? I think it depends on the niche. I think it also depends on the subject matter, what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and I think it also really kind of depends on what the product is. You know, we're used to smart speakers and smart and, you know, like smartphones and things like that, having a female voice. Um, You know, Google is probably the only company that actively does male voices to any decent degree. Um, Mm. Like all of their machines, it'll be 50-50 of what voice you get when you first get it. Um, So... That I mean, maybe they could, I could see it happening at that point, maybe one day, yeah. <laughs> but again, yeah. it's like, it's not something that I've particularly seen. I think maybe it's more of a demographic thing that's changed altogether, as opposed to like a men, women thing. Okay. You see it, especially in pol- like political ads. Um, You know, you're not going to find uh your average Sam Elliott, who's going to do political ads for Democrats. You're looking for somebody who's usually long- younger, like 30 and under. You're looking for somebody who may be LGBTQIA. You might- you're probably looking for a minority of some kind. Um, You're probably also looking for minorities who speak multiple languages. So this way they could be on both the English and whatever language spot it is that they're going to be casting for. 
Um, so these are things you you tend to kind of see more. It's more like of a, a a shift in who's being asked to read as opposed to whether it's just men or women. Right. Okay. Let's dive into something a little bit controversial then, because you've opened up this really interesting. Yes. I need another sip. <laughs> yeah. So trans voices um, from an oral point of view, you can hear when someone has a trans voice, maybe because they're going through the change medically. Maybe not. There are people who identify as female or male that may have um, a voice that's undistinguishable between female and male. And I encourage them to use trans if if they feel comfortable and if they are would be hireable. Maybe that's unethical. Does someone have to be trans to be hired as trans or is there a vocal quality that clients are looking for for that voice? Can you open that window, that door for us in that regard? That's yeah, complicated I'm... and mm -hmm. so, so, so important to ask. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, um, that's not a factor that is something that is relevant to us. What, because the like sound I said, or their yeah. gen? Yeah, because a lot of, um, well, both, really, because mm -hmm. it, it kind of depends. Again, if somebody identifies as femme, and they were originally uh, like assigned male at birth, you know, if they are, if they identify as female, I'm going to send it to them if they identify as female. It goes okay. based on how you identify personally to me as somebody who's part of the community. And actually non-binary voices are becoming a trend that we're seeing yeah. happen where they want yeah. somebody who sounds a little more gender, gender neutral, neutral, not because yeah. they don't want it to be like, oh, no men, no women. It's like, hey, these yeah. are just a group of people that have a different vocal quality that seem to resonate with everybody. Yeah. So that that's the main thing. It's like I, anybody who actively excludes can fight me. Um, they yeah. are not, like, they yeah. should not be doing that. That's rude. That's disgusting. Yeah. So, I don't, well, I, and I Natasha didn't know that and I will stand behind you and yeah, I didn't know that you. was a thing. It, to me, it's wondering is there a different, you know, you've got the sound and then you've got the, the how you identify. And so you've answered both those questions. If you identify as a woman and you were I'm, born as a male, you'll send them female auditions. That's just what you yeah. are out of respect. But it's not up to, as, as opposed to the sound, right? It's just how well, they clients are asking for non-binary yeah, sound. Yeah, like if the if the client is asking for it, then we're making sure to supply that. If they say, "Hey, we need a, a female voice," we even if somebody's like non-binary, we will like if they are more femme sounding, we will send it to them because they they fill in fit in the umbrella, yeah. and that's up yes. to them. If they and the thing is, yeah. I think that it has was considered ta taboo back in the day was the idea of pronouns. It's like most people now either have it like in their email signatures or they introduce themselves with it or it's somewhere on their profile. They're not a weird touchy subject anymore. If somebody says, Hey, these are my pronouns, X, Y, Z. It's like, okay, yeah, sure. I get it. And then you know how to audition them from there. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't know, it's not a rude thing to ask. People mm. think, oh, no, I can't ask them. That's too personal. No, that's not the case. If you have questions it's like, hey, I just want to double check your pronouns. Yeah, that's it. I just wanted to double check your pronouns. Mm. I want to make sure I'm being respectful to you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. really all it takes. Sam, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I think that was super educational. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay. Go ahead. No, no, no. I think it, it also echoes back to the day of where people used to say like, oh, I am I can do a 30-year-old, I can do a 60-year-old, but it's really what's upstairs. It's your attitude, it's your experiences that come through that bring out the authenticity, that make an audition or a performance in voiceovers click and resonate with whoever's doing the final casting decision or the comprehending of what you're trying to say. So that's yeah. why Lotus Productions, as Sam you know, really told you, that's why it's all about authenticity and reality. Uh, yeah. in, in, in Lotus Productions. Uh, the future of voiceover is very vertical. It's very drilled down about the really, you know, tight, specific community, the really small, passionate markets. That's what voiceover is going to be about now and going forward. Well, wow. there's a quote. We, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a quote. Oh, my gosh. Sam's were better. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be using all of them. The client probably isn't going to go back into that big system to find you again. They're just going to work with you directly. So it gives you the opportunity to, you know, grow your client base. It gives you an opportunity to practice yourself as a salesperson, as a marketer. So, uh, you know, obviously we're not against online casting in any way, you know, they, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they, 
people can run their business any way they like. That's you know, yeah, that's gorgeous business. insight. Gorgeous yeah. insight. But I think so, that's where that's where we see online casting. Uh, yeah. Will see, it? You, the one thing I'd say about online casting, and Sam as a younger producer, or Jillian who are younger producers, uh, I just don't see them coming into a big machine to cast voices. Uh, the their experience as young people on the internet, the next generation of producers who are coming into this industry are used to one-on-one -on -one relationships. Really? They don't they don't go into machines to find things. They're used huh? to going right to what they want. And so because that's what the internet provides. So large online casting sites have done very well and, and they'll continue to make money. There's no doubt about it. But I think the trend is away from them. What really? Do so? What do you think, Sam? Yeah, I mean, we're, I would, I would. Yeah, agree we're big believers. We're big believers in putting your focus on the next generation of producers, directors. What mm -hmm. is their experiences? Mm -hmm. How do they look for things? And so, uh -huh. and to align yeah. yourself with who they are and how uh -huh. they do things. Right, Sam. And so, what is that, yeah. Sam? Tell us. So... Tell us the future. Like, how do we market <laughs> ourselves to the future generations? Good question. Yeah. So. um you know, I, I kind of actually, uh, I do a seminar usually in the spring semesters and a couple of colleges. And one of the things I talk about with them is uh, about, you know, having an online presence. And I always tell people, look, you can definitely separate your work life and your personal life, have two different sets of social media for that. That should be kind of a common. Everybody knows what offense is. That's for different things. But um, it's like you you have at least one account. And you have at least two, probably, for most people. Um, the big thing is just, you know, making sure that all of your stuff is integrated, making sure you have a website. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need to know how to make things crazy pretty. Like, there are plenty of websites you can use. There's Squarespace. There's Wix. There's Strikingly. There's a whole bunch of places that you can host your website on that make it very easy for you to be able to build a site and then it can integrate with your social media and then your social media feed is updating your web page and the web page is showing as active and when people start searching for you it just helps with the search engine optimization that finds you on google so just making sure you're kind of on top of your online presence is very critical um you know there's a lot of, like me included i'm not a very huge person on social media i am of the mind of saying do as I say not as I do because I'm not really much of a social media person myself <laughs> um but the thing is as a talent it's a different story you really mm. do need to be putting yourself out there it is a big part of your entire career so it's like really mm -hmm. critical to make sure that you have a good understanding of your online presence and you know how to integrate all of it with a website that keeps you know whether it's your spots or your reels or your backstory things like that all in one place it makes it very easy to find you when you say integrate, do you mean like update your website with your new spots and then con or like how are yeah. you connecting your social media to your website? Like what's that? Yeah. So there are most uh, most websites um, have plugins where it's like, hey, if you plug in your account information from Instagram, anytime you up some update something on that account, it'll show up on the website and auto update. It's like an RSS feed. It'll just auto update. It's, so important. Yeah. it's so important because then it looks yeah. like it's alive and not a static dead site. Yeah, it's exactly. So Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. These and tips it, are killer yeah. guys. Killer. Once, once again, younger that's producers, cool. that's what they recognize. That that they I they think see I'm that gonna the, have to get a new they, website. They yes, see that are. in the website. Well, I think a static website still has its place, sure. but uh, you it's know, still a calling producers. card. It's still a business card. Right. Um, yeah. But Jim, you said that you thought that younger producers are going, you know, directly, and I thought the younger producers they like finding things on the internet because they grew up with it mm -hmm. and you know sliding right or whatever i've not well yeah not even then it, it's still right. like sure we're looking on the internet for these people but the thing is if the these people have themselves. a website they will have an email that you could reach out to them directly with mm -hmm. we were as opposed the one to thing, going through yeah it's like one thing i think a lot of people don't realize is that my generation like millennials specifically we were the analog to digital transition uh, transition so we have a good understanding of both but the way they trained us was to know how to find things on the internet where to look what corners to be at like where where things ah. need to be it was kind of like i know back in the day they used to teach like uh 
how to find out information from a book based on where everything was on those yeah. first couple of main pages. Mm-hmm. It's the same yes. thing, just in a digital <laughs> format. So we're kind of trained Whatever to do know you where mean? to look for things. <laughs> yeah. Card <It's> catalog? Like... <laughs> okay. It's Yeah. So since we were kind of trained to know where to look for things, we know where to find people's emails. We know where to find their contact information. Yes. We know where to find those pages. So it's very easy for us to be able to really kind of drill down and find what we need. This is a killer interview. Y'all. I know, I know. <laughs> Killer because it's covering everything. <laughs> okay, we we're try. just going to keep you with one more question and you've answered mm-hmm. so much already. So I don't know what else you could possibly say, but please share your wisdom about what the future might hold for the voiceover industry creatively and otherwise. Well, that's a great question, an important question. Uh, obviously, Lotus Productions has a managed synthetic voiceover division. We've been in the synthetic space, generative AI space for six, almost seven years now. Mm. Uh, we recognize that as that's part of the new voice economy that's coming. Mm. So what we always tell people is now is the time to evolve your skills, your careers, your business. You know, as Sam kind of mentioned earlier, you don't have to be like an AI designer or an engineer. You simply need to start to understand what's possible with generative AI and synthetic voices and apply that knowledge to your business and to your career. Mm -hmm. If you start studying generative AI and synthetic voice right now, a year from now, you're going to know so much more and you're going to be in such a better position. Mm -hmm. So we really encourage people to explore the world of generative AI and all its implications into this industry. What do you want to say, Sam? Yeah. Um, Another thing I would probably say is it would be a very good idea on the topic of AI to not be an ostrich. What I mean by that is do not put your head in the sand and ignore this, like if it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will put it this way. AI's base purpose is to be a tool that helps. How you use it is a different story. Mm -hmm. So it's an objective tool, but it's used by subjective people. And that's why we're having a lot of problems right now with AI being an issue in not just voiceover, but in acting and et cetera, et cetera, other industries. by learning about it, you come to understand it. And when, like, another thing you're going to have to realize is this is going to be a part of your career going forward. Whether you have a voice or not, you are going to have to have some basic understanding of how it works. Because if you don't, you're behind. It's almost like not knowing how to record yourself on a program. That's wow. what the equivalent of it is at this point. And, um, you know, keep in mind, a lot of these designers are not evil people they're like they just don't know it's like you need to be having conversations with people finding the circles that they uh speak in or that they are part of so this way you can also get involved because if you are not an engaged and involved member of the community your voice is not going to be heard when something comes up right plus when you start learning how to communicate with people in a different industry because realistically these are all just different industries starting to converge on themselves Hmm. um they're gonna have different lingos different ways that they say things for all you know they could be saying the same exact thing as you but just using different words so Hmm. it's really important to get an understanding of how they talk so this way you know how to talk to them and vice versa Wow. It's going to make it a lot more, uh, it, there are a lot of people who are really just trying to make sure that this is as transparent as an industry as possible from the get-go, because we know how it can be if it doesn't. And, you know, Lotus has been huge advocates of that forever. So one thing we always advocate is educating yourself because it does you no good to not know what's going on. Yeah, yep. the, the combination of human, human artistry and AI ingenuity offers enormous per- promise, but it also offers enormous responsibility. So we advise voice talents and designers and developers and audio production companies like ourselves to uh, choose your partners wisely. That's all mm. like like any good business person would. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Cheers, guys. Guys, this is <laughs> so interview. much. I feel yeah. so educated. And we can awful. do this all day. <laughs> That's wow. great. No problem. <laughs> this episode of Speechless is brought to you by... CenterCam helps eye-to-eye feel more like heart-to-heart. Are you ready for better conversations, better quality conversations during video calls? Yes, because CenterCam's middle-of-the-screen camera makes it easy to maintain eye contact, and it also feels more natural. Helping humans connect from a distance. The CenterCam.com. We both we have both one. Have one. <laughs> Voice talent need quiet. For us, quiet comes in the form of a Studio Bricks booth. I love my Studio Bricks because it's whisper quiet in my incredibly noisy neighborhood. 
And I love my booth because when clients see me on Zoom, they know I'm a pro. <laughs> Go to studiobricks.com. World-class sound isolation, light environmental footprint. Speechless.